Welcome to this week's progress report on the foundation. This week I did some work on the personnel page, working on getting that set up and functional. I also did a lot of work on interceptions, including a complete rewrite of the UI for the interceptions, and I'll be showing that off. I also started to do some work on the framework and setup for facilities and bases, including uh, their uh, detection range, so starting to work into being able to detect things when they enter your sensor ranges. And there was also a lot of general UI cleanup and uh, polish that was applied this week as well. Anyway, let's get going on showing some stuff. First of all, I just want to explain. So, a lot of people have commented about the floating stuff that uh, they've seen. It's not any special feature or whatever. This is my testing block. You can see it over there, left uh, corner, bottom left corner. And that's my testing area. That's where I put all of the objects that I'm constructing, tweaking, putting their code together. Unity has a concept of prefab. If you just get one good example together, you can have Unity copy-paste it wherever you need it. And so those are my examples right now that I'm just working on for convenience sake. They'll be deleted and removed. First of all, let's speed up here and let's get uh, something to happen. Alright. So we got an anomaly that's popped up over here. The AI hasn't noticed it yet, so we'll take action on it first. We go back over here to where the base is. You can see first of all that I've changed the font on the timer. I've changed it to a monospaced font, which if you're like me you probably notice it makes a huge world of difference in the animation for counting down on the timer. The next part of it is is that there used to be a lot of pop-ups if you remember. You'd click on a plane or click on a transport and a pop-up would come up and that pop-up had more options that you had to select from. They just had no real connection to the thing you were clicking on and they were big, took up a lot of screen space. So I decided to attach the UI, the pop-up information, to the actual craft. So you see here when I click on the craft, I get a UI that pops up here. It's attached to it, so if you're zoomed out really far, you can't really see it very well. Zoomed in close, you get all the details. Here we get the same information showing the affiliation of the craft, if you know it, and what the cargo it's carrying, if you know that. There's the recall button for sending it back to the base, and this button is for selecting a new target. It doesn't currently work yet. I'm still working on some of the UI and code behind selecting new targets. But the recall button, as we know, will send it back to base. Behavior is pretty much the same otherwise. Now let's see if we continue going. Now the AI has noticed that it looks like it didn't see this one. It's it's seen another event somewhere that we haven't seen. So if I click on this one, you can see that since this is an enemy craft, the pop-up's a little bit different. We can see its affiliation is Chaos Insurgency. And so I gave icons instead of the worded buttons, help save space, and I think it makes it look a lot nicer. Here's the three main interaction options. Missiles for destroying, and we've seen that uh, behavior before. The dialog box is for threatening, where you try to divert their course and get them to change their plans. Not implemented yet, it's in the process though. Hopefully next week that'll be in place. And then the eyeball over here is for tailing or following the craft. This is hopefully going to tie in really nicely with stealth aircraft in the game. Alright, so with those three buttons, just to demo this, if I click here to send an attack, we can see now off to the side that it shows me that I have an attack assigned to this. And these icons will be colored. If another group sends an intercept plane at one of your planes, you can click on your plane and see the intercepts that are targeting it. And their buttons will allow you to focus on their plane. Their intercepts will only show up though if you've detected them. I can also assign more than one if I want. If we go back to my base here, we can see that indeed I've sent out three intercept planes. 
you can see that the UI is basically the same for these planes, however, you can see that it'll show the payload instead, and also this blue circle. This was a feature request that was made last week, and I figured out how to do it this week, which is fuel range and visually showing that fuel range. And if you see, that plane reached his fuel range. And he's t returning to base so that he doesn't run out of fuel and crash and burn. In the long run, you probably won't be able to launch an intercept if it's impossibly out of the reach of your plane. That just doesn't even make sense, so that plane would normally not be a valid intercept for a craft across the world. But now he's returning to base, and if you go back over here you can see that since he's returned to base, he's no longer listed as an intercept. One other thing, when I have this plane I have these intercepts set up here, I can actually click them to send them back to base just like I could recall them clicking on them. So I can control what I'm having intercept from this menu itself. So give me your feedback on this, but I think this is a dramatic improvement to how the intercept UI worked before. I think it goes a long way to address some of the awkwardness of the UI. You can see over here those planes are now returning to base. Boom, they're back at base. Also, I applied this same thought process to the city pop-ups. Alright, so for the personnel page we can see over here that we have moved the search menu and the list over to the right side. It made more sense on the report menu than the management side and after nearly a week-long battle trying to figure out where I wanted to put all this stuff I finally am pretty happy with setting it over here. So I've moved it, placed it over here. You might also be able to note that the UI has been cleaned up slightly. Some of the lines have been removed. Some of the lines have been thinned. There's some subtle gradients that have been put on. And all of that kind of adds together to break up the monotonous uh, colors that were there that just never changed, were very bland. It makes it look a lot better in my opinion. Give me some feedback if you have it. Now, as we can see here, there's some new buttons and search functionality at the top. They're not implemented yet. I still have some work to do on that, but there will be a search bar for searching via text, being able to type in, I don't know, gears to search for gears, or I want to find everyone that has a specialty in memetics. Uh, now I can't remember how to spell memetics. And I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Anyway, that word that starts with an M, I can type it in and it will search all of the applicable texts of the characters for something that matches that. The four tabs are some quick search functionality. The crouching soldier represents people with combat specialties that would work well as MTF leaders or already are MTF leaders. The research tab will bring up everyone that has specialties in research. And the last one on the left is the current list. It shows all of the people. There's also, if you click on the entry now, there is a detail screen. As you can see, it's not very functional yet. Lots of work to be done, and by the time I got to this point, I, was, I decided if I even want to get a video out today, I need to stop coding. <laughs> As you can see, I'm thinking that there will be three main tabs. There will be a service tab, which will have a list of all the events that this person was involved in and probably any notable things that occurred to that person because of that event. The loyalty tab will give you the description of this character's loyalty and also a description of their ethical standing and paradigm so that you can see how compatible this individual is with your organization at the moment. Because some of these individuals, if they're really starting to clash with the way you're running your organization, you might want to let them go or terminate them rather than risk they defect and go over to another organization. The Psych Evaluation tab will be written in the form of a psychological evaluation, which will be kept up to date on the person as they progress. But it's basically going to be a description of the character's stats. And as they improve and meet certain thresholds, it will update the text. So as you read the text, you'll be able to get a generalized idea 
of how good the character is at certain things, what kind of negative traits or positive traits they might have. This should help make the characters be less of a pile of numbers and be more of an evolving person. I want the stats to, uh, to change and upgrade as the characters use them, just like someone would in real life. If you go out and use weapons a lot, your weapon handling is going to improve. If you do more research, your research skills are going to improve. Now, there's a few tricks I'm going to use to make it fairly clear what is being talked about in the descriptions. You're not going to be sitting there squinting at it, wondering, ah, oh, what on earth is it saying? Now, I'm going to try and make it pretty clear through a couple different tricks like bolded text what it's trying to say so that you can pretty quickly scan it and see what the relative strengths and weaknesses are of the character. So hopefully it'll be a cool thing that fits the universe and displays the statistical information without reducing the character to just a pile of stats to be improved. Also, when we get into the combat section, these characters are going to have equipment and things that you want to set. And also you need to set what base they're working on, things like that. Well that's part of the management side of the menu, but right here where we have the details, I want to manage my character. Well, it's easy. We'll just open up the gear menu. Boom. Oh my gosh, it opened. I shouldn't be that excited about that, but it was really annoying to actually make that pop open. So, as small as that is, let me have my little victories, okay? One victory I didn't get, however, if you see that image and don't recognize it, it's nine tells from Containment Breach, and it's just a 2D flat image. I was really hoping and worked really hard trying to be able to get a 3D model to appear there. So I would really like on this screen for there to be a 3D representation of the character and as you change their loadout, they change their loadout in 3D right there in front of you. It's what I want to have happen. However, uh, I may not be able to do it without purchasing a very expensive Unity license. I'm going to see what other tricks I can pull off, but um, I might have to hold off on it for now and do something more 2D until I can reach that point. But the main purpose is, is that this left side will have all of your buttons for changing the settings on the character, while the right side will show you all the detailed text-based information on the character. And this left side will have a button that will pull up the details for searching. So together these two halves allow you to do everything you need with the personnel, all right, well, I think that's everything I had to show you for this week. I'm hoping to have a lot of good things done for next week. A lot of new behavior on the intercepts, for one thing. Also, hopefully the personnel page will actually be functioning more, and I'll be able to show you some of the functionality, including show you the work I've put into the psych evaluation so far. I've, I have put some good work into it. It's just not ready and wasn't going to be ready nearly soon enough. So that should get done next week, and I'll have that to show you. Be sure to send me any suggestions, feedback, questions that you have, and I'll catch you next week.